This is John from GeekBeat. You know, in the last episode of welding, uh, I taught you guys how to weld, essentially. We started at the very beginning. We went through the process of doing our very first welds. Now, as promised, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a little artistic project, maybe something for your mother or your girlfriend or your boyfriend if you're a lady when you do this. This episode of Geeky is brought to you by Drobo. I've got some two inch steel. This is plain steel that we got at Lowe's, two inches by three sixteenths thick. Make sure you get at least 3 sixteenths because you don't want to go thinner, it'll cause problems. I've also got some pieces of 3 quarter inch by 3 sixteenths. That's all we need. 2 inch and 3 quarter inch. And also get a little piece of L, L bracket kind of steel. This is 1 inch L bracket. And this is an eighth of an inch thick. It doesn't have to be as thick. This is just gonna be used for the part that hangs things on the wall. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two inch wide pieces and convert this into some two inch by two inch squares that are gonna serve kind of as central pieces for connecting things together. So, let's get started. We chopped up some little two inch Squares just like that. It's just a two inch square. Don't worry about it. And if it isn't perfect, it doesn't matter. But it's nice to have them all about equally sized. They don't have to be. Now, here's what I want you to look at. Uh, we have no pattern whatsoever. We are making this up on the fly. So what I did was I just kind of put these four pieces here and I, and I took our three quarter inch steel and just kind of connected it. So I've got edges connecting here, here, here. In, in just a pattern that looked decent to me. Now you see I'm using these magnets, that's just to hold this metal down because it's a little long for me on my particular table. I'm gonna mark these pieces, not necessarily all at the same length, but I'm just gonna mark them for, for where I wanna cut them off. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna cut that one there. Over here, I wanna keep them kinda symmetrical this way. So maybe about here, do not get all caught up in the exact lengths. Okay, this one is gonna be maybe a little shorter. And this one I'll make about, I don't know, a little shorter as well, right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut those four and then we're just gonna weld it back together like it is now. Now, if you wanna be really clear about how you have this, take your marker, draw an intersecting line like that across each one of these. That way we know where to put them back together when we try and put them together. And if you really wanted to, you could number them like one. And uh, go ahead on your table, put one, two, two, three, three, four, and four above it. We cut all those things and what we're gonna do now, I've got them lined back up in their respective places. Uh, we're gonna weld them. The first thing we have to do is tack weld them together. But before we do, because I got a lot of moving parts, we got like eight parts here, we need at least one of them to be stable. So I'm gonna tack weld one to the table. All right, here we go with that. John's having too much fun, so I'm breaking in to thank our sponsor, Drobo. <laughs> you can't store your metalwork on a Drobo, but you can store pictures of your metalwork on a Drobo. Or how about all the pictures of your loved ones and your travel vacation pictures? Or how about all the important data your business runs off and needs to make sure it is kept safe? Well, next week, Dave Curley and I will be in Omaha to visit Drobo's customer service call center. What? Did you, yeah, you're oh, coming with me. I guess so. <laughs> Did you know it's right here in the good old USA? Well, I'm looking forward to meeting the people who make your lives easier by helping you when you need it. And we're gonna have a meetup, so I hope you'll join us. All the details are at geekbeat.tv slash Omaha. And I apologize, you will have to meet Dave Curley. <laughs> oh, do I need to send it back on to J John? Yes. Okay, John, you can take it again.
We've got it all welded up. Doesn't it look wonderful? No, it doesn't. It looks worse than it ever did before. But this is the beginning of the end. We have almost, we, there's a little more welding to do, but first is a whole lot of grinding. This is the worst part. If you want to be artistic, you got to grind. So here's what we're going to do. I've got, it doesn't matter what kind you use, I've got a little DeWalt, uh, but you're gonna use a grinder with four inch, four and a half inch flap discs. All right, this one is 36 grit. That is about as rough of a grit as you can get. And the reason why is I am going to try and remove all of this welding. What I hope for is that along these seams, I've filled it in and now I can grind off the welds and have just a flat piece of metal. So that's what we're gonna do right now. You can see I probably had to grind on that for about a minute or so, but this is the finished result. Now remember that uh, on the other side, it still looks like three pieces but because we actually welded it, which is the process of taking two pieces and turning them into one, when we grind off the weld marks, we're left with nothing but one solid piece of steel. So that's great. Now we just need to do that to the rest of these and to finish, off, finish it on off, we're gonna do the same thing to each of these kind of little arms that comes out. So we're gonna have this smooth, polished kind of finish on the entire piece and we'll be almost done. I'm finished with the grinding. Honestly, that, is, that takes longer than anything else when we're doing a project like this. Uh, so we've got it basically all ground down using the really heavy duty 36 grit uh, flap disc, okay? And you see it wears it away. These things are not cheap. They're probably about eight bucks a piece. So these are consumables. You gotta figure you're gonna use one of these 36. And then over here, we've got a brand new 80 grit. So somewhere in the 80 to 90, we're gonna use that just to put a final polish on it. But before we do, we have one thing missing from our piece of wall art, which we'll be able to hang however you want it to. And that is, it needs a way to hang on the wall. We don't wanna put a nail here and balance it. That would suck, okay? I've cut two little tiny pieces and one piece that's a little bigger which, you've see, which you see I just drilled a hole in. You can use any old drill, just make sure you have a decent metal drilling bit. Put this thing in a vise and drill a hole. Now that hole is what we will use to hang it on the wall and these will serve as feet. So for example, we might attach this right about here and then we'll put the feet maybe like one here and one over here so that it can you know, hang on the wall. Now, in this case, because I did it this way, we have to determine which side is gonna be up now, but you could also do four of these and put one in the center of each of these pieces, and then it could be hung any way you want it to hang. So you've got all kinds of options, but this is how we're gonna do it right now. Now it's time for the final grind. That's it. It's hot, dirty, nasty work, but at the end of the day, you end up with something looking like this. So you'll notice because we use the flap discs, you see how as I move it around, it shimmers in the different light. You need to play with your grind patterns and just, if you don't like what you see, keep grinding until you do. Practice makes perfect. And on the back, we've got the little hook um, uh, with a hole so you can use a tiny little nail or a picture hanger and two more for the feet. So what will happen is this will give about a one inch standoff from the wall when we put it on the wall and uh, it's going to make this nice little shadow. You kind of, you maybe see a little bit of that shadow in here, but it's, it's going to stand off and give you a one inch shadow. Now, 
that's how you make this project. Here's what I want you to think about because we made this one just for you guys online. Imagine this, but five times bigger. There's no reason you can't keep adding additional squares and additional rods and imagine connecting it, have it go kind of up and over and down and over and you can make a really like an eight foot long wall art. It would be awesome. Just put you plenty of little hooks and feet on the back. You could even do it with multiple levels of depth. Make some little feet, put some on the front and have some of the things standing in front of others, etc. So it will turn into beautiful art and I hope that if you make some, you send me a picture and let me know because I really want to see it. All right, if you guys enjoy these little welding tips, you have to let me know because GeekBeat does not usually do this and it takes a lot of time. So I won't be making more of these kind of tutorials unless there's a lot of interest. So thumbs up, send me, you know, leave a comment, talk to me on Twitter at John Pose. Let me know what you think. And you guys, good luck with your welding projects. See you later.